Good morning, and welcome to the virtual worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown, where we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person, and where we support each other on our spiritual search for truth and meaning. My name is Reverend Kate Wilkinson, and I am so glad that you have joined us this morning. This weekend marks the one year anniversary of our very first online worship service. So much has changed since then. I feel like I have a lot more gray hairs for one thing, but of course, so many other things have changed too, and we have changed. And yet, each Sunday, we have gathered together for worship. We have never missed a Sunday. So now, just as we do each week, I invite you to light a candle wherever you are while I light our chalice here in the sanctuary of the meeting house. In this way, we can feel together even while we are apart. You know, I remember just how difficult it was to make the decision to stop gathering in person. And also how quickly it became clear that that was the right choice. We had no idea what was ahead of us one year ago today, but we still managed to get a lot of it right. Let's take a look back at that very first worship service online. Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Kate Wilkinson here at the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown. I'm here by myself this morning with just the video crew, but I know that I am not alone because all of you are here in spirit. Our worship services are going to continue even though we can't gather together. So please tune in every Sunday at 11 and have a candle ready at your home, wherever you're watching, so that as we light our chalice each Sunday, you can light along with us. And that way we can feel like we're really connected. This is a really strange and challenging time that we are in. And just like you are trying to figure out what living through a pandemic means in your life, we too are trying to figure out what it means for our faith community. And even though we know that this is a serious time, we're trying to approach this with patience and creativity and a sense of humor. And I hope that you will too. It is so disappointing not to be able to gather together in person. But don't worry. Your minister has a long history of faithfully leading people through their disappointments. In fact, my first job way back in high school was to work at a 17th century bakery next to Plymouth Rock. And boy, were there a lot of disappointed people there. it is a little smaller than you thought yeah it's a little small and oh yeah they did it did break and they pasted it back together and and moved it here so I know it, it is a little disappointing what how far did you travel oh all that way huh that is a long trip oh yeah well the you know the clam rolls across the street are really good so there you have it you're in good hands here not to worry we can all weather all kinds of disappointments and unknowns together and we have right we have weathered so many disappointments together over this last year we've also helped each other through our fear our grief our sadness and our loneliness 
We have spent this year apart together. I could not have gotten through this year without our fabulous worship committee. They have been steadfast, creative, and totally supportive of me as we navigated this virtual worship adventure together. They've put together some amazing worship services of their own and have helped me with mine. Here they are, back in April, affirming our UUMH covenant. Please join us now in affirming our covenant. Love is the spirit of this meeting house. This is our great covenant. To dwell together in peace. To seek the truth in love. And to help one another. And what would we have done this year without our choir? Mary Apt, our fearless leader, Brenda Silva, our accompanist, Paul Cezanne, loyal singers. We thank you so much for reminding us that though we have not always known where we were bound, we were still always home together in this faith community. Good friends together gather here. Where are we bound? Your hands and voices fill my heart. Here is my home. Come, Lord, he come. In the beginning, we thought that we would be worshiping online for a few weeks, maybe a few months. It was a surprise to find myself celebrating Easter from my basement pulpit, and then to still be separated as we reached Mother's Day and Father's Day. The days and weeks and months stretched on, but we kept marking each occasion together. Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. You might be a little disappointed that you are at home this morning instead of together. I'm a little disappointed too. Happy Mother's Day. I know that this can be a tricky holiday for some of us. Happy Father's happy Day. Happy Father's Day. Yom Kippur is known as the Day of Repentance. This week is a special service because it is our blessing of the animals. Our service this morning is entitled Finding Gratitude. 
As we approach the Thanksgiving holiday during what has turned out to be a most difficult year, we are perhaps not as filled with the spirit as we usually are at this time. Shalom. Welcome to my Hanukkah candle lighting. This is the menorah, which means candelabra, or Hanukkiot, which is a specific kind of candelabra with eight holders to mark the eight days of the Hanukkah festival. Good evening. Welcome to the virtual Christmas Eve candle lighting of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown. I am Reverend Kate Wilkinson, and I am so honored to be spending Christmas Eve with you. Throughout the year, we marked the holidays together. We also grieved for those who were sick and dying. As the number of deaths from COVID-19 kept rising, and as they began to get closer and closer to home, we kept taking time to remember, to memorialize, to comfort one another. And of course, during this year, the pandemic wasn't the only challenge that we were facing. We faced natural disasters, fires, floods. We faced racism, injustice, a historic election, and deep political divides. All while staying apart, we faced these things together. And we prayed together. We prayed. Spirit of life, we are holding so much this week. At times it feels like our hearts might burst with all of the emotions of being alive and human in this moment. We ask this morning for the strength to remain open-hearted to all that is our lives today. The blessings of being together, of comforting and strengthening one another during this strange time. The worry about a hurricane battering the Gulf Coast and all of the memories that brings up of previous storms still not fully recovered from. The heartache of watching helplessly as fires rage across California, burning homes and farms and ancient redwood forests. It is too much to bear. We feel the outrage that yet another black man has been shot by the police we pray for Jacob Blake and for his family. We pray for his healing and recovery and for justice to be done. We pray too for the protesters who cannot stifle their anger at injustice any longer. It's hard to see and feel such rage. It's hard even though it is naturally what arises when peaceful protests go unheeded. We remember that riot is the language of the unheard. We pray that the voices at the margins are heard and listened to. We pray that something can be done about an armed militia and the frightening escalation of conflict causing even more lives to be lost. Please, may no more lives be lost because of our inability to see and hear each other. We hold fear and anxiety about the upcoming election wondering what direction our country is headed in, imagining every eventuality. We pray for the strength to take up our part in the process, daring to be hopeful about the future. 
We pray for all those who are ill and all those who have died from the coronavirus. And we patiently bide our time and follow the best ideas we know about what we believe will keep us safe. We hold in our hearts parents and students and teachers who are all worried about what this new school year will bring and how exactly to make it happen. We imagine a time when all of this is over, when the rains come to drench parched land, and when systems of racism are dismantled, and politicians fight for all people, and we no longer need to wear masks, when we can hug our friends and loved ones. Oh, we pray for that time to come. And yet, we are alive today, in this time, in this world, with all of its beauty and all of its brokenness. And so we don't wish it away. We don't wish to squander any precious moment of this life, because we know it is not endless. We know it is brief, and if we don't live here and now, we will miss it. We will miss it. And so we ground ourselves in gratitude, even amidst the heartbreak. Gratitude for the redwoods and their ancient ministry. Gratitude for the people who evacuated safely and those who are helping them, comforting them. Gratitude for the firefighters who risk all to put out the flames. Gratitude for the protesters, for the next generation that has already begun to change the world. Gratitude for being awake and alive in this heartbreaking and beautiful world. We find in our broken open hearts a way to say, Thank you for the gifts of this day, this hour, this chance to be together in community, even though it is not how we dream of being together. In the words of the poet E.E. E. Cummings, we thank you, God, for most this amazing day for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. We thank you, God, for this amazing day. Amen and blessed be. Throughout this year, amidst the sadness and the struggle, our choir has continued to remind us that in these hard times, there would always be singing, always be dancing, always be praying. And we continued to do those things because after all, how could we keep from singing? My life flows on in endless song, above earth's lamentation. I hear the real, though far off hymn, that hails a new creation. Now, through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though the tempest round me roars, I know the truth it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it giveth. 
No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since love prevails in heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble as they hear the bells of freedom ringing, when friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? To prison cell and dungeon vile, our thoughts to them are winging. When friends by shame are undefiled, how can I keep from singing? In these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times, in these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times. In these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times. In these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times. In these hard times, there will always be singing, always be singing in these hard times. In that first online worship service, I read to you May Sarton's poem, The Work of Happiness, and then offered a reflection on it. I didn't really realize then what endless hours alone would really feel like. I also didn't know that hugs might not be the very first thing that comes back when our community regathers. But, I'm struck by how much we did seem to know, despite all of the unknowns, about what we were being called to do and who we were being called to be. So let's listen to some of that reflection again now and the closing invitation still stands. When I chose this poem a month ago, I couldn't have known that our happiness would soon need to be built within the kindness of our walls, that the dear familiar gods of home would soon be our only companions, 
that the work of faith would indeed be done in a kind of solitude that we're not used to. As an introvert, I am not terribly daunted by that challenge. I love the quiet time, the alone time, the reading and crafting and long walks. I could spend endless hours in my house in complete contentment if it weren't for the reason that I am now inside. The fear for my friends and family and strangers I've never even met. The worry and the prayers that they will be okay, that they won't get sick, that they will have enough food and money and resources to weather a closed down economy, that children will still learn enough have enough stimulation not to drive their parents crazy, that governments will learn how to cooperate and how to be generous and kind. I could spend all of my silence in worry, in anxiety, but that is not what we are being called to do. We are being called to carve a new normal out of this time of great unknowns. Called to source community in different ways. Called to summon our creative instincts. Called to care for one another through and beyond walls of isolation. Called to go deeper and more still than we have ever gone before. Called to entertain ourselves and be patient with ourselves and love ourselves. We are being called to the work of happiness. A poem by Laura Kelly Finucci. She says, when this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, a Friday night out, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be. We were called to be we hoped to be. And may we stay that way, better for each other because of the worst. My dears, when this is over, I am going to give each of you the biggest hug in the world. And I am going to be so grateful to see each of your faces. And we are going to have one hell of a party to celebrate all the things that we are newly grateful for, that we had mistakenly begun to take for granted. But that party is not going to be for a very long time. So in the meantime, I invite you to find something each day that you are grateful for. I invite you to reach out to me, 
to each other, to someone who might be struggling, I invite you to reach out all your tendrils of compassion. I invite you to grow slowly like the rings of a tree. I invite you to be patient with yourselves and your loved ones and the state of the world. I invite you to the work of happiness. And we are, I promise you, doing this together. Take good care. Amen. And blessed be. It's living in the morning. But if you want to get out and do it, you can. Always finds a way. Water in my body. Water in my soul. When I go down down to the water, by the water I feel. Never calls me over. It's calling out my name in the day and in the night. I hear that river all the same. It's calling me over, calling out my pain. Oh, a river gathers tears just like Thank a river you. gathers rain. Water oh, heal my body, water oh, heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water I feel. River is a traveler, always on the go. Oh, a river never worries if it's fast or if it's slow. River, take me to where I need to go. Oh, and I will just relax and let the river flow. Water heal my body, water heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water I feel It's living in the morning. Thank you. It always finds a way. Water heal my body. Water heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water I feel whole. River calls me over. 
is calling out my name in the day and in the night I hear that river all the same it's calling me over calling out my pain oh a river gathers tears just like a river gathers rain water heal my body water heal my soul when I go down down to the water by the water I feel home river is traveling always on the go oh a river never worries if it's bad river take me to where I need to go When I go down, down to the water, by the water, I feel whole. Water heal my body. Water heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water, by the water, by the water, by the water, soul. I feel whole. When I go down, down to the water, by the water, I feel whole. Water heal my body, water heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water, I feel water heal my body, water heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, I go down, down to the water. Water heal my body, water heal my soul. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.